I think with the advent of, um, first I would like to thank Vanati and the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And um, really thank uh, Vanati for including me in this course with all the stalwarts. Uh, I think with the, as uh, uh, Dr. Anshu said, the, with the advent of uh, lamella corneal procedures, the sheen of uh, penetrating keratoplasty was slightly lost. But there are certain situations when you still have to do a penetrating keratoplasty. And I'm, this being a vast course, I'm just going to go through the different steps of a uh, full thickness PK. Uh, types of PK are an optical, therapeutic, tectonic, and uh, cosmetic. And the steps in PK can be broadly divided into graft sizing, trifination, suturing techniques, and combined procedures. So donor trifination can be done in several ways, either from the endothelial side or from the epithelial side, and most of us prefer to do it from the endothelial side. And if you do that, then it's important that you oversize the graft by about 0.25 to 0.5 millimeters, because otherwise there can be a risk of excessive flattening, which can result in angle collapse and post-PK glaucoma. And also it reduces the risk of micro leaks. So this is a video showing how uh, we are preparing the eye for uh, um, how it is done. And this is a manual trifine that I normally use. And this is, uh, you load the, uh, uh, the, the size of the trifine onto the manual uh, uh, trifine uh, instrument. And um, the, the corneoscleral rim is kept on the Teflon block, Teflon block and it is uh, centered. You uh, place a mark so that you make sure that it is well centered. This uh, centration is very important because when you're going to punch and you get a, a, a graft which is not well centered, then suturing is going to be difficult and that can ha actually induce more astigmatism. So once you've done that, you just have to put a, a nice, uh, give a nice punch and then you get a, uh, the size, a size of the graft that you desire. There are other vacuum trifines which are available, most popular being the Barron's trifine. And the advantage with uh, using uh, vacuum trifines is you get a very nice uh, cut which without any sloping edges and uh, less chance of uh, astigmatism if the suturing is done properly. But I think most of us coming from uh, India, I think, uh, prefer to use a manual trifine. And um, I've been using this for several years with uh, excellent results. So, uh, before you do the host refination, flaringa ring is used in uh, most situations, particularly when you're doing a patient with aphakia or a one-eyed patient, high myopia, or uh, uh, in these cases, the risk of uh, scleral collapse and patient having an expulsive is very high, so it's important that you use a flaringa ring. So this is a, a small video showing how the flaringa ring is being sutured. It's important that you use an appropriate size flaring ring because it should be at least two, three millimeters outside. It should not be too large, then it, it may not actually work. And you place four uh, sutures. You can either use a nylon or a, um, a, a braided suture, it doesn't matter. And you, it has to be sutured down to the sclera. And that's very important, particularly when you're dealing with a fakey case. The next step I'm going to show you is how do you measure? Because when you take a trifine, what is the size of the trifine that you're going to uh, plan on? It's important that you measure the cornea. So if you're planning on somewhere between 7.5 to 8, you mark and see whether it will be, you'll be able to accommodate it. And you have enough, at least two, three millimeters of rim of cornea left behind so that it is not too close to the limbus. If it is too close to the limbus, the chance of attracting blood vessels is more. And I use a RK marker and uh, usually mark the cornea so that the suture place get, uh, aids us in suture placement. So this is, uh, these are very simple steps, but uh, it will be very important when ultimately for, for getting the best results out of a penetrating keratoplasty. So once that is done, then you do a host refination. Uh, the idea is that you do a horizontal refination as much as possible without putting too much of pressure on uh, either side and go at least to 90% depth. In this situation, again, if you have a vacuum to refine like a balance, it really helps because you know exactly how, mu how much depth that you can go. And here, uh, I think um, I'll just show, uh, uh, I'll show you a case. Uh, this is how suturing is done. I'll just go on to the uh, case of an optical PK. So after measuring, I've taken about 7.5 millimeter uh, uh, trifine. The, gra the graft is going to be, the host is going to be um, 7.5 and the donor is 8 millimeters. And I'm using a corneal, uh, corneal curved corneal scissors to remove the, uh, uh, the diseased cornea. And the edges are trimmed using vanas uh, scissors. And normally I do a PI in these uh, cases. You can do an inferior PI so that in case a patient's graft fails, then you can do a DSEC on these 
patients. This is actually a very clean case, but the patient was very old, so I decided to do a PK. Otherwise, even a, a DSEC could have been done for this uh, patient. So you put four interrupted sutures, and then in between the sutures, you add another four. So you go on multiplying like that, then you get around 16 sutures. 16 interrupted sutures are placed. And uh, I normally bury the suture towards the donor site because that prevents the, uh, the knot being on the, uh, to a closer to the limbus which can attract blood vessels and chances of rejection being more. This is a, one of my patients who, who had a, a therapeutic PK done and um, also um, now uh, he, he was ready for an optical PK. And the whole anterior segment was plastered and so the desire to go ahead with the PK we couldn't do any lamella procedure on this patient. So in this uh, situation, you, you might have a surprise. If you go full thickness, you might be actually hitting the iris. So don't go too deep and uh, try to enter the eye using a, uh, uh, a knife or um, you can use a 15 degree blade. And um, you, uh, again, I'm using a corner scissors and you can see that the whole anterior segment is plastered. And um, you, the underlying, uh, as I suspected, there was a, a mature cataract. So it's important to release the PAs all around, and you can use a high-density viscoelastic, go all around and release the PAs. And uh, I, I prefer to do, uh, as much as possible, I, I prefer to do a rexis. If I get a rexis, then I can definitely insert the lens in the bag, and that'll be a lot more safer than putting it uh, under the iris, particularly in these damaged iris, you can uh, produce more problems. So if I'm able to get a rexis, I'll be very happy with that. And once um, I've created a large enough space, I'm inserting a multi-piece uh, eye oil into the uh, bag. And remove all the cortical remnants because they can induce inflammation and that can uh, actually produce a graft rejection. And not only that, it can produce other complications like uh, a, a post-operative glaucoma and uh, other problems. And uh, very important that as much as possible after you finish, you evacuate the uh, chamber and remove uh, all the viscoelastic as much as possible and leave behind a small, I leave behind a small uh, air bubble so that um, I, I know that the AC is well formed, particularly in these Dr. cases. Dr. Sujata, we'll yeah. wrap up now. Okay. And, uh, Thank you. The, these we'll are some of these yeah. cases that we yeah. can do. Other, I think I'll just wind up. 